OpenAI is back. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the things people were able to create using the new O1 Mini and O1 Preview models, as well as what OpenAI has in store for us in the future based on a recent private meeting OpenAI had with its biggest investors. A new AI startup founded by Feifei Li focused on the creation of large world models has already raised over $230 million. These large world models or LWMs they plan to build are essentially simulations of the real world in which AI is either generating itself or using to learn from. In this video, we'll take a closer look look at what exactly these large world models are and the impact they can have on certain industries. Lastly, ARK Invest, an investment management firm, recently posted this article titled How ARK is Thinking About Humanoid Robotics. In this article, they state that if humanoid robots can operate at scale, they could potentially generate roughly $24 trillion in revenue, an amount that sounds insane at first, but once you take a look at how they got there, it actually starts to make sense. <laughs> So starting off with OpenAI's new O1 Mini and O1 Preview models, as you guys know, they've been out for almost a week now and people have been really impressed with their capabilities even on their own personal tests. They can handle questions that normally trip up other LLMs really well and overall these models can just reason way better than anything we've ever seen. Now we've all seen the benchmarks and how it's levels ahead of GPT-40 and other state-of-the-art models in pretty much every category, but what you may not have seen is how it performs on a simple IQ test. They tested the latest Frontier AI models on the Norway Mensa IQ test test, and as you can see here, OpenAI's new O1 preview model has an IQ of 120. The second closest model to it is GBT40 or Claude3 Opus, which both appear to have an IQ of about 93 or 94. So once again, levels ahead of any other model, and keep in mind this is only O1 preview. OpenAI's full O1 model is still locked behind closed doors. Now I know an IQ test is not exactly the best test for an AI because, well it's a human test, but I think it could still be a good way to measure progress in these models, even if the actual IQ score isn't accurate you can still see how it compares to other models. Another way we can see how good a model truly is is how well it can code. Given that these new O1 models are known for their exceptional reasoning, you'd expect them to also be very good at coding. This holds up, as you can see from the compilation of the games being played on screen, which were all created entirely by O1 Mini and O1 Preview. This reminds me of when Anthropic introduced artifacts, which allowed users to create in real time with Claude in a small window alongside the chat log. With Claude's coding abilities, which were quite impressive at the time, people were able to create the games from a single text prompt for the very first time. OpenAI's O1 model takes this to the next level with its improved reasoning capabilities, which open up a whole new world of possibilities. I think the new system is a, I don't want to overstate this, and I certainly don't want to overhype it, but I don't want to understate it either. This is the beginning, very early, we, we numbered it one for a reason, but the beginning of a significant new paradigm. And, you know, there's been this whole debate about is AI capping out? Are we getting close to some ceiling? Is progress going to slow down? And I think the most important message of this release is that not only is progress not slowing down, but we have the next few years in the bag. So that was Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, giving his thoughts on the new O1 models in a recent podcast. You might think that the O1 models are not that impressive, even after seeing the examples of what it can do, which we just looked at. But the point that Sam Altman is making here is that this is just a start. There's model O1, there's going to be model O2, O3, O4, and so on, just like we had GPT-3, GPT-4, and soon GPT-5, then 6, etc. I covered this more in depth in my previous video, but essentially these O1 models actually get better the longer they think. Noam Brown, a top researcher, researcher at OpenAI on reasoning and someone who played a major role in the development of these new models recently said this, OpenAI's O1 thinks for seconds, but we aim for future versions to think for hours, days, even weeks. Inference costs will be higher, but what cost would you pay for a new cancer drug, for breakthrough batteries, for a proof of the Riemann hypothesis? AI can be more than chatbots. So this is truly a new scaling paradigm which is nowhere near its limit yet, and these next few years are just going to be insane. On that note, Sam Altman mentioned as well that they have these next few years in the bag, which I wouldn't bet against since they've been able to continuously stay ahead of their competition. We know they've been planning to work on AI agents and we recently got some more information about that. In an episode from the All In podcast, venture capitalist and accomplished entrepreneur David Sachs revealed OpenAI's internal roadmap for the future, which they shared privately with a small group of big investors. He gives us the main takeaways from that meeting in this clip and it's honestly pretty crazy. Just take a listen. Let me give the audience a little update about something we just heard at OpenAI. They just did a, 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 a day where they brought in relatively small number of investors that kind of gave, gave us all an update on their product roadmap. And it sounds kind of similar because everyone's moving in the same direction. So there are three big takeaways. Number one was that they said that LLMs would soon be at PhD level reasoning. Right now, it's more like a smart high schooler or college student in terms of the answers. We're going to be at the next level. 
Shortly behind that is agents, like you're talking about. And then third and closely related is that agents will have the ability to use tools. And a tool can be a website. So if you think about it now, you've got this LLM, it's really smart. It's got, you know, it's like a PhD. It, you can give it an objective. It will break that objective into a list of tasks. And those tasks can include using other pieces of software. And thanks to things like OpenAI just launched the um, audio API, which developers can use. It's in private beta. We have some companies using it. The LLM can now basically pretend to be a human. So in the next couple of years, we're literally going to have highly intelligent AI agents that can actually get things done for us. You can imagine how useful an AI agent could be if it was able to operate a computer, for example, which is clearly where we're headed. And pair that with the fact that they can pretend to be human, as you mentioned, things are going to get really weird really fast. Now, in terms of when we will start to see AI agents from OpenAI, it's unclear, but what we do know is that their next release will likely be Project Orion, their secret AI model that was actually trained using synthetic data generated by OpenAI's O1 models. Here we have a recent tweet from Sam Altman hinting at the release of the Orion model. He states, I love being home in the Midwest. The night sky is so beautiful. Excited for the winter constellations to rise soon. They are so great. And if you aren't aware, Orion is one of the winter constellations. So we'll potentially be getting this mysterious Orion model by the end of this year. If not, then in 2025, along with GPT-5. One more thing I had to mention regarding OpenAI, they've been discussing potentially changing to a completely for-profit company as early as next year. It states here, according to Fortune, co-founder and CEO Sam Altman told employees at a company-wide meeting that OpenAI's structure is likely to change next year, bringing it closer to traditional for-profit business. OpenAI is currently structured so that its for-profit arm is controlled by a non-profit, which seems to frustrate investors. We remain focused on building AI that benefits everyone, and as we previously shared, we're working with our board to ensure that we're best positioned to succeed in our mission, OpenAI said in a statement. The non-profit is core to our mission and will continue to exist. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this. I mean, OpenAI really used to be a non-profit company that's turned into a kind of mix between for-profit and non-profit. People like Elon Musk already shared their thoughts on this matter, and now OpenAI seems to be seriously considering fully embracing the for-profit structure. So do you guys think OpenAI should be allowed to even do this, and if so, why? Or do you think OpenAI is abusing the system here? Moving on, we have to talk about Feifei Li's new AI startup, World Labs, focused on spatial intelligence and the creation of large world models. They posted some information here on their official website. It states, We believe that artificial intelligence will help humans build better worlds. Progress has been rapid but we have only seen the first chapter of the generative AI revolution. Language has thus far catalyzed this electrifying early moment, with text-prompted image and video models rising up alongside large language models as a harbinger of AI's potential in the visual realm. These models have already empowered people to work and create in new ways, but they only scratch the surface of what is possible. To advance beyond the capabilities of today's models, we need spatially intelligent AI that can model the world and reason about objects, places, and interactions in 3D space and time. Today, we are announcing the formation of World Lab a spatial intelligence AI company building large world models, LWMs, to perceive, generate, and interact with the 3D world. We aim to lift AI models from the 2D plane of pixels to full 3D worlds, both virtual and real, endowing them with spatial intelligence as rich as our own. So the idea here is to create AI systems that can truly understand the real world and how to manipulate it. This type of work is extremely beneficial for humanoid robots especially, but also for many other things. They further state, over time, we expect to train increasingly powerful models with broader capabilities that can be applied to a variety of domains, working alongside people. Initially, we will focus on generating 3D worlds without limits, creating and editing virtual spaces complete with physics, semantics, and control. We hope this will unlock new capabilities for creative users and professionals such as artists, designers, developers, and engineers. It will also allow anyone to imagine and create their own worlds, expanding the potential of generative AI from 2D images and videos to 3D worlds. We already have text-to-image and text-to-video generators, but now we're close to having text-to-world generators. You can already see the progress being made on this front if you look at the gaming industry. I'm sure you have already seen these clips of the game Doom being generated by Google DeepMind's Game Engine, and while there was another similar project that also uses diffusion models to generate games and is called Game Gen O. We introduced Game Gen O, the first diffusion transformer model tailored for the generation of open world video games. This model facilitates high quality open domain generation by simulating a wide array of game engine features such as innovative characters, dynamic environments, complex actions, and diverse events. Additionally, it provides 
Besides interactive controllability, thus allowing for the gameplay simulation. So all these clips are entirely generated by Game Gen O from text prompts. It's essentially a text to video generator that generates game environments that you can actually control. Right now it can only generate very basic game environments and scenarios, but think about how good this will be in just a few years. I mean, with text to image and text to video generators, we've made insane progress in such a short amount of time, and I could see the same thing happening with text to video game and text to world generators. In other AI news, Ark Invest posted this article where they make some pretty bold projections about the future of the humanoid robotics industry. To start, they explain here how generalizable robotics could represent the potential $24 trillion or more global revenue opportunity. As you can see here, they calculate the potential revenue opportunity of humanoid robotics for household applications. 2.3 hours of paid work per day, which represents the average person, times 2.8 billion, the working age population, times 1075, the weighted average hourly wage, times half the value attributed to free time versus paid time. This equates to a $12.5 trillion opportunity for household applications, with the other $12 trillion coming from manufacturing. Here they're showing how much revenue humanoid robots would eat up in the manufacturing industry based on how much they can increase productivity. The green zones are where ARK Invest expects us to land, meaning a 50% to 200% productivity increase created by humanoid robots would potentially generate anywhere from $2.8 trillion to $28 trillion in revenue. They further state, according to our research, the US manufacturing sector employs nearly 12 million people who work 23 billion hours per year for $785 billion in pay to produce output worth $2.4 trillion, as shown below. In the unlikely event that it were to substitute robots for all human workers and put them to work for 16 hours per day, the manufacturing sector would need only 5.9 million robots, half the number of human workers employed today, to deliver the same level of manufacturing output as shown below. Now, in terms of how much this is going to cost, they projected here to be about half the cost of employing humans. They also have this chart here which shows how much a humanoid robot would have to increase productivity for it to be worth employing by a company. For example, if a humanoid robot is only 5% more productive than the average human worker, at that company, then as long as the humanoid robot is cheaper than $16,000, it would save the company money. You can imagine that a humanoid robot who never takes breaks or gets tired would likely result in more than a 5% increase in productivity over the average human worker, so this is why it's literally going to be a no-brainer for companies to hire these once they become good enough. Overall, I honestly think their projection of $24 trillion is pretty reasonable. I mean, there are so many potential use cases for a highly intelligent generalized humanoid robot, and as we scale up production and they get cheaper and cheaper while also getting better, it's only a matter of time before these start being implemented on a massive scale. Lastly, in the world of AI video generation, Runway ML releases their new video to video mode for Gen 3 Alpha, which is now available to all paid users. This could be helpful for video editing and creation, and also I could imagine that with extremely high inference speeds, you can get this to generate the video in real time, like a live stream or even just life around you if you were to be wearing some type of mixed reality goggles. Obviously, that's still a few years into the future, but again, we've seen before how fast these things progress, and what you're seeing right now is the worst it'll ever be. We also had a new release from Suno AI, the AI music generator that last time I heard of was under a lot of legal pressure from big music labels due to copyright reasons. I believe they are still fighting those suits, but in the meantime they released Covers, a tool that essentially transforms a song into a similar but slightly different other song. Kind of like Runway's video to video generator, this is like a song to song generator. Once upon a time, could've made this all up. Never dreamed I Once upon a time Could've made this all up Never dreamed I Once upon a time Anyways, that's all the news for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like or a comment. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.